Hi everyone! In the previous video, we implemented a few methods that read input from the command line and transform this data into a date or a boolean. This means that this operation can fail when the format of the data is invalid. So we added some custom retry logic to deal with these failures gracefully. Now, if we want to generalize this process and provide powerful methods to handle errors, we need to control when a piece of code is evaluated. So today, we're going to study how code is executed in Scala, and in particular, how to delay the evaluation to the appropriate time. So let's start by reviewing the different techniques to define a code expression in Scala. First, we can use a val to define a variable. A val expression is evaluated at the moment when we create the variable. For example, here, we call the method drop on the word New York. And as you can see, drop is executed immediately upon creation of the variable. Same goes with counter and addition. Another important point about val expression is that they are evaluated only once. This means that after the variable is created, we cannot refresh or reevaluate it. For example, here, we look up the current time at the creation of the val, and then when we read the content of the variable later on, we always get the same result. The second type of expressions are defs or functions. Defs are the complete opposite of vals. Nothing gets executed when we create the function. The code is only evaluated when we call it. And if we call a function multiple times, the code re-evaluates as many times. For example, here, we see that hello is printed twice on the command line. As you know, functions can take multiple parameters but it's only meaningful to compare vals to defs that don't take parameters, meaning methods like greeting or full name. In Scala, we have the choice to define a zero-parameter function with or without empty parentheses at the end. The convention is to use empty parentheses if the function performs an action, which is the case for greeting. Otherwise, if it is an FP function, we don't use empty parentheses. For example, full name is an FP function. It only combines a first name and last name together. Finally, there is a third type of expression which sits between vals and def. I'm talking about lazy val. A lazy val is like a def in the sense that the evaluation is delayed until the variable is accessed for the first time. But it also behaves like a normal val when it is accessed multiple times, meaning that the result of the expression is cached. This is why we only see one message printed on the command line, even though we access greeting twice. One advantage of lazy vals is that they solve the val initialization issue. Previously, we saw that if a val references another val down the line, we get a null pointer exception because vals are evaluated immediately from top to bottom. But if we use lazy vals, then we don't have this problem anymore. While lazy vals are a nice idea, they have limited use cases. This is because the Scala compiler needs to generate lots of code to ensure that each lazy val is evaluated only once, which is something quite difficult to achieve in a concurrent environment. This means it's not necessarily a good idea to use a lazy val as a performance optimization, because all these checks introduce some overhead. In summary, we saw that in Scala we have three types of expressions, with a different evaluation model. First, we have vals, which are evaluated once when the variable is created. Second, we have lazy vals, which are evaluated only once when the variable is first accessed. And finally, we have defs, which are evaluated every time the method is called. By the way, it's quite convenient to use a println to visualize when a piece of code is evaluated. But this is not a technique we can use in our automatic tests. For example, how would you write a test to verify that lazy vals are only evaluated when they are first accessed? 
Please pause the video and think about it for a minute or two. A common trick is to use a mutating variable and an action which modifies it. In other words, we use the state of the variable to detect when the action is executed. Let's have a look at an example. First, we define a mutating variable counter set to zero and a lazy val action which increments counter by one. Then we check that after creating action, counter is still equal to zero, meaning that the lazy val hasn't been evaluated yet. After that, we access action and verify that counter is now equal to one. Finally, we access action a second time and check that counter hasn't been updated. This way we know that accessing a lazy val multiple times does not reevaluate the code. This testing technique may seem strange if you have never used it before, but we'll practice it quite a lot in this chapter. For example, let's write another test that checks the evaluation model of a function. A def should be evaluated every time it's called, but not when it's created. In, in other words, it behaves like a lazy val, except that the second call to action should increment counter a second time. That's it. I'll let you test the evaluation of vals as an exercise. Next, we're going to talk about how the parameters of a function are evaluated. Say we have a function sum, which takes two numbers, add them together, and print the result. We also define two zero-parameter methods that print a message to the command line and return the number. In your opinion, what happens when we call sum with these two inputs? Which messages are printed to the console and in which order? First, we see the message EDA, then Bob, and finally the sum is 155. This is because the arguments of the functions are evaluated first, one at a time, starting from left to right. Then once all the parameters are evaluated, we execute the body of the function. In a sense, it works as if we extracted each parameter into a variable and then call the method with these variables passed as arguments. So far, nothing exceptional. I believe most programming languages evaluate arguments in this way. While this behavior is suitable for most use cases, there are situations where we would like to delay the evaluation of some of the parameters. For example, let's have a look at get or else. It's a function which takes an option and a fallback value. The idea is the option is a sum, then we return the value inside it. But if it's a none, we return fallback. As you can see, it, it works as expected when we call get or else with an option of an email address and support at fptower.com as a fallback value. In the first case, we get bob at gmail.com because the option is a sum. In the second case, we get support at fptower.com because the option is none. However, we can't use get or else to execute an action when the option is empty. For example, if we throw an exception in the fallback value, then the code is executed regardless of whether the option is a sum or a none. This is because the arguments of the function are evaluated before the body. But in cases like get or else, we need to delay the evaluation of the second argument, fallback. One way to do this is to transform fallback from a value to a function. But fallback doesn't need any parameters. So we are going to encode it as a zero parameter val function. In Scala, the syntax is empty parentheses arrow a. It may look weird, but if you think about it, it combines two features we have already seen. One, def function without parameters such, such as greeting, and two, the relationship between def and val function. The benefit of this encoding is that now we control when fallback is evaluated. This only happens when we call the function. 
meaning when we put empty parentheses after the name of the function. This way we only evaluated the fallback function when the first argument is none, exactly as we wanted. This pattern is quite common, so Scala created a special syntax for parameters that behave like fallback. They are called byname parameters. A byname parameter is defined almost like a val function, except that we don't use empty parentheses, which is slightly more concise. The main benefit, however, is that byname parameters are used exactly like normal parameters. For example, within the body of get or else, we don't need to add empty parent parentheses to trigger the evaluation. And the same happens when we call the function. The two parameters are defined in exactly the same way. In fact, we have already used this technique many times without even noticing. For example, the apply method of the class try uses a byname parameter to delay the evaluation of the argument. This is why we can use try to catch exceptions. If the apply method used a normal parameter, then the exception would have triggered before the try catch block. The same goes with the apply method of future. It captures a block of code passed as parameter and sends its execution to a thread pool. In summary, today we saw three types of expressions in Scala. Vals, which are evaluated once when we define the variable. Lazy val, which are evaluated once but later on when they are first accessed. And defs, which are evaluated every time the function is called. We also covered two types of function parameters. Normal parameters, which are evaluated immediately, and binary parameters, which are evaluated when they are accessed. Finally, we studied how to test code evaluation using a mutating variable and an action that modifies this variable. We tested the behavior of lazyval and def, and I encourage you to write tests to check the evaluation model of a byname parameter as an exercise. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this lesson about evaluation strategies. And if you find working with lazy evaluation confusing, don't worry, it's completely normal. We'll practice it quite a lot in this chapter, and I promise you, by the end, you will be an expert. See you soon.